Uh, I'm Greg Foster Rice. Uh, I'm a professor in the photography department where I teach the history of photography. Um, I plan this show, uh, The Many Hats of Ralph Arnold, it's up through December 21st, up here at the MOCP. Go see it. I will plug it because I'm not ashamed. Um, but it's also a part of the course because it is a part of Art Design Chicago, which was an initiative funded by the Terra Foundation for American Art. Um, as a spirited celebration of the unique and vital role that Chicago plays as America's crossroads of creativity and commerce. It's led by the Terra Foundation, and this is a citywide partnership of cultural organizations that explores Chicago's art and design legacy with more than 30 exhibitions and hundreds of events throughout 2018. I mention all of this because my exhibition and course, while they weren't sort of, well, the, the, the exhibition was funded by the Terra, the course wasn't, but the course couldn't exist without the Art Design Chicago Initiative. Um, I chose to design this course because I recognize that this was a historic moment in Chicago where there's going to be exhibitions all over the city focusing on the history of Chicago art and design and the, the historic legacy that we have. Um, the goals for this class are, are impossible to read for you down there, as well as for me. Um, in addition to the regular goals for this course, it was to engage um, students with arts organizations around Chicago in diverse neighborhoods and also to have students to identify and to analyze actual physical works of art um, rather than just representations of them. And then lastly, to curate their own show out of this as a digital online show. Um, we have done, uh, we will do 11 site visits over the course of the uh, semester. We are very rarely, if ever, I've only been in the classroom twice. We've gone to all of these sites from the south side of Chicago, the Smart Museum, the west side with the National Museum of Mexican Art, the north side, and a lot in downtown. We have done six walking visits so far, five using the CTA, and I have only lost one student who got off the red line and got on the 22 bus going south instead of north on the way to the Chicago History Museum. Um, this is a picture of my students on the L. This was the first time they'd been on the L, or actually second time for our class. Um, it was a really, it's been a really great experience working with them. Um, I have really focused on accessibility and safety issues with my students because for many of them this is their first time to travel around a big city. So I provide extensive details on where we're going and also how to be considerate of the neighborhoods and communities that you're visiting as a good citizen of Chicago and recognizing that you're coming into these communities from outside. Um, this is a, just a smattering of a few of the shows that we've seen because I have 80 students in my class. We break up into groups of 25 to 30 and in any given institution we rotate through three exhibitions at every institution. So we have between 45 minutes and sometimes if we're lucky an hour at each of these exhibitions. Uh, the way that the class is organized is the students are uh, asked to visit the module before the visits. They take notes um, uh, in advance. They attend the site visit, they meet us there. We don't take them to the site visits necessarily. We do give them an option to go with a TA, but they, most of them come on their own now. Then after the visits, they write up a discussion forum question, uh, questionnaire. Um, they also have to comment on each other's questionnaires, uh, their forum posts. Um, these are examples of the student notebooks. Notebooking has been a really important component of this class and one of the skill sets that I promised the students that they would learn throughout the course of their time. We uh, offered them various uh, strategies, whether it's Cornell notes, um, mind mapping, sketch noting, et cetera, and we work with them uh, over the course of the weeks to improve upon that. Um, there's a couple of key takeaways. There have been some really terrific contrasts. Students were able to contrast the white privilege inherent in John Singer Sargent's paintings and some of the questionable advertising motifs for that show where they borrowed from Oranges of the New Black to advertise Gilded Age Splendor. Um, and we contrasted that with a show of photographs about authentic communities of color expressing themselves in the 60s and 70s. Um, we visited uh, different types of museums. The National Museum of Mexican Art was our first significant public transit visit and it was also exciting for them because it is a community or oriented museum that has a very different mission and focus than other of the institutions that we went and visited. We've been seeing different modes of art making and it's been really important for the students to actually see actual, to see art objects in the flesh and to write about it. And that's part of their curation of an exhibition at the end is how would they talk about these as material artifacts and how does that express something different than just seeing it in reproductions. So that's been a really important lesson for them. So for example, seeing Carrie James Marshall's paintings tacked up on the wall as canvas the way they are. Um, I had to learn how to embrace the serendipitous moment the students love the work of Brendan Fernandez at the DePaul Art Museum. He does these really intricate installations that are made out of the armatures that African masks are hung on when they're on display as a way of referencing colonialism and sort of histories of cultural patrimony and heritage. But then he has dancers dance around the galleries. My students were so excited by that that they danced throughout the galleries, which was very <laughs> cool. 
Um, I also had to embrace my students' level of knowledge and learning from them. When we went to the Chicago History Museum, my student CJ in the middle got to play on the blues guitar and he explained to the whole class, you can't play the blues without the E string, which was missing and had fallen off the guitar because you needed the sustain in order to carry out the way that the blues is done. That was a really great lesson for us as a class from the students. We explored how museums are not neutral spaces. We learned to think about how the architecture, the wall labels, even the languages represented on the wall labels tell us about the subtle coded agendas of cultural institutions. And here's a discussion where we compared some of those institutions, the Art Institute, the MCA, and the National Museum of Mexican Art. This is an example of the student discussion forums. Um, and what they do is over the course of the semester, they do eight out of 11 of these discussion forums. And then each of these allows them to build up a, a sort of a, um, an arsenal, if you want to call it that, of images and objects that they will then curate into their final exhibition. They also, when they post up those discussion forums, they have to, as part of their grade, comment on another student's discussion forum for 20% of that grade. And what I think is really great about that is it builds, I don't have time to build as much of a community as I'd like. They build an online community and they push each other. They actually encourage each other, but they also really push each other to be more rigorous in the way that they analyze and engage with the objects. Challenges, it's really hard to get to know 80 students when not because of the size of my class, but because we're on the move all the time. So that's been a really big challenge for me. So I'd like to figure out some ways and strategies of trying to get to know them a little bit better. There's still students who I feel like I don't really know in this class. And it's very different for me to not know the names of everybody in my class, which is sort of embarrassing to have to say, but with that many students, what the heck. Um, lastly, the final challenge is just, uh, frankly, keeping up with the grading, keeping up with the emails, and updating the site. Um, I know that I can do a much better job of this in the future, and that's something that I'd like to do um, if I had the opportunity to teach this class again. But it's been a terrific experience, and I've learned so much from the students and had a great chance uh, working with these cultural institutions. Thanks.